I love metal work and I've decided I need to make more metal tools. So I've already got a welder, lots of hand tools and various other things, but I've decided I need some more stuff so I can make metal things. So today we're going to make a metal roller. So this isn't a sponsored video, but I've got various tools that brands have given me. Thanks again to Ryobi for all the hand tools. They sent me the tools, but they don't pay me to say they're great. And thanks again to Lincoln Electric for sending me all my welding gear. They did send me the welder and I went to Lincoln Electric to actually have a go at welding, but they don't pay me money to say their welders are great. Any other tools in the video, I probably bought, including this Evolution Miter Saw that's going to pop up in a moment so I can cut angles properly. They've got quite good reviews but I actually bought this one in a shop. So let's have a look at the design. So I'm going to make the design out of box section steel and that's because I've got lots of it left over from another project and also loads of these bearing pillow blocks. So the basic plan is we've got these three rollers with an adjustable distance between them around this pivot point which basically means we can put something in and roll it along. We're going to put a handle on this axle here and hopefully we can roll the metal in there and make it into varying curves. So I'm going to put a bottle jack or something to push up between these two points. And that should mean that I've got enough distance to get my metal in. I won't be able to roll very thick steel and we've only got 20mm rollers for now, but we can always upgrade that in the future. I just happen to have loads of 20mm stock bar. Right, it's time to cut some metal. <laughs> Right, it's all my metal cut and drilled, so now it's time to clean it up before we try and weld it, because it's all covered in nasty grease. So I've just done a couple of little tack welds and then ground the surface back so it's smooth so this will sit flat and there's not a lump and then I can weld all of the other sides and everything will remain flat and square. So there's my first project TIG weld in a proper thing. I have been practicing a bit but I'm not doing too bad I don't think. Still got a long way to go probably. So that side's a bit more lumpy. I was going a bit quicker there and I didn't burn the weld into the material as much. If you go slower, then obviously it'll make a bigger, deeper weld pool. So uh, there we go. Still learning the technique really and seeing what I can get away with. So my inside corners are a bit lumpy, but um, obviously the side of the metal is curved, so there's a big gap there to fill. So it's going quite slowly and just trying to bung loads of filler rod in. Probably get better as I work out what the best thing to do is. So there's the top pivoting section. I'm not too unhappy with that. I think my welds are pretty much just acceptable. They should be sound anyway. So I don't think there's going to be too many mechanical issues there, even if they don't look that pretty. One mistake really, obviously the bearings go onto these holes I drilled along here. Where are the ones on this side? Yes, they're here. So I've put this piece on the wrong way round. I'm going to have to re-drill all the holes to put the bearings on the top.
Right, I've cut this piece out here so we can weld in a piece of steel tubing and that's going to make a pivot point so my bottle jack has something to sit on. And there's the main section. So I've welded up all of this on all the sides. Pretty happy with most of my welds. They're not too bad. Those ones are a bit better. Still a few challenging internal corners, but I'm pretty sure it's much heavier duty than it actually needs to be. And then this bit goes in here. Like that. And that lifts up there and hopefully squashes that steel in its rollers. So I'm just waiting for that bit of tube to arrive to weld in there and then we can clean it all up and paint it and then assemble it. Right, so here's the base. These pieces are for one of the rollers. And then this piece goes in here. So then these are for rollers, which go up here like this when it pivots. And then you'll notice there's some extra bearings at the back. And that's gonna make the main pivot point for this assembly that goes through that hole there. So the bearing blocks here, the little bearings, they've got little set screws so I can do them up against the studding. Then I don't need any spacers in these gaps and it should all stay in the middle. And I've got two nuts on each end done up against each other. So now my bottle jack sits in there. I made a little thing there to go over the top so it doesn't slip out. And now I need to do something about the bottom. It probably could just rest on there. But what I'm gonna do is get a bit of tube, cut it and make a semicircle that sits on that piece of tube open this one out slightly and just tack weld it on the bottom of the bottle jack. Right, so now I've got that welded on the bottom and that sits nicely on there. So that pops in there and now my jack should work and it shouldn't slip out. So I've also fitted my rollers in their bearings, the three rollers, and this is 20 millimeter diameter bright steel bar. And bright steel tends to be a bit better tolerance than mild steel. If you buy mild steel, it probably won't fit in 20 millimeter bearings, but the bright steel is pretty good. So that's a really tight fit. And again, we've got those set screws so that we can tighten that up and it doesn't slip out. So all I need now is a handle on this one. So to attach the handle to the longer bar, I'm going to use like one of these collar clamps, which you can buy. I haven't got around to making my own just yet. And I can weld a plate onto that to turn round. Then I can take it off at some point and put a better handle on in the future. So I've put three welds on there so it's still flexible and I can do it up and the last few welds I did with it actually clamped on so make sure it can still be tightened on the handle. And I burnt those right in with 105 amps and a massive weld pull so you can see the heat's gone all the way through so that should be more than strong enough hopefully. Right it's probably time to give it a test now and see if we can bend some steel. So I've got this thin piece of steel here which is probably four millimeter and it's quite thin it's like 15 millimeters wide so we're going to stick that in here jack this up. I need to do something about the handle on this jack. Stick it in the middle. All right, let's just bend that a little bit and then, oh yeah, look, it rolls backwards and forwards. 
Okay, so that bit works. Let's jack it up a bit more. Let's move that can of WD-40. Alright, a little bit more. I could probably do quite a bit of this at one go. There we go, so hopefully you can see that bending now. Right, it's loose now, let's just jack that up a bit more. So that works quite well. Um, we've got a nice hoop there. We've got about 250 millimeters in diameter. Um, obviously with material that's this thick, if it's a thicker piece, like a piece of box we'll do in a minute, then obviously we'll get tighter because the rollers will uh, make a tighter radius there. So that's pretty good though. Um, I can't quite get it around in a loop because my bit of steel's not long enough. So normally it'd have to be much longer and we'll cut the ends off. But I'm pretty happy that I can uh, bend steel there. So let's try some other material. All right, now we're gonna try this, which is the same material the handle's made from, which looks like five or six mil thick. And obviously it's quite a lot wider. Oh, just jack that up till it's tight. There's quite a big gap there actually. We could get much thicker material in it. All right, we just... Yeah, don't think that's any match for my 10 ton jack. Let's just roll that in there. Handle seems to be working all right. Whoops, there we go. That's just the, the, the spring in it there, look. So I could get a tighter bend. Of course, I'd have to move the rollers closer together. But I think for now, this will probably do for most things. So you probably noticed as I was rolling that the material was going side to side in the rollers and of course none of my pieces are perfectly flat. But why is that? Yes, of course my rollers are not parallel so these two are fine on this piece because this is basically one piece and um, they're welded on steel so I'm assuming they're fine and therefore I've assumed this one is the one that's running out and looking at it you can kind of see that it does. So what I've done is just drilled the holes out slightly bigger on this side, shifted this up, put a bit of steel in and jacked it up to make sure it's the right height on both sides and done the nuts up really tight. A uh, future improvement would be really being able to adjust those so you could roll a spiral if you wanted to. Um, and some of the commercial machines have sort of an adjustable tower with a thing you can tighten up on each side. But that's the beauty of making your own tools. You can always cut it to pieces and change it. Right, let's try a bit of box section. There's only thin box, but we'll see what happens. Right. I should start that in the middle. Well, it's rolling, so that's good. Seems to be staying in one place this time. Now we sorted out that parallel bar issue. Right, it appears to be stuck at that point. So I guess that's as tight as you can go and you can see the metal's kinking there slightly. So there it is, it's definitely rolled it. I couldn't roll it anymore with those rollers. Perhaps we need fatter rollers to do anymore. Um, don't know if I'll need to bend box any more than that. If I do, I'm probably using the wrong material. So another improvement would of course be fatter rollers so there's more contact with the material. We'd need to upgrade these bearing blocks, but they're only bolted on and we could move any of the positions if we put say 40 millimeter diameter rollers in instead of 20. And if I did upgrade the rollers, I want to do thicker material. Of course, this is too tall really, so we'd have to take this out. Then of course we can bring this down. We could put a scissor jack in instead, then we could do much thicker material and we probably need to move the roller positions at that point anyway. So I hope you enjoyed that. It is literally the first project I've ever done with T. 
TIG welding, and those are my first actual welds. So I'm pretty happy with what I've made there. I think that's pretty good. And the plan, of course, is to make more and more tools, and then I can do metalwork projects in my channel. And the normal content is robotics. So don't forget to check out Open Dog, the open source quadrupedal robot, which I made with CNC aluminium and also 3D printing. I might do another exosuit series and maybe a version three now that I can do welding and we can make some of those pieces stronger that broke before and plenty of other projects. But next time I actually need to make a vice stand for my big blue vice you saw earlier, which isn't attached to anything. So I'm gonna make a bit of a simpler project and make a big metal workbench. So a quick ad for my merchandise, don't forget you can get Open Dog t-shirts in my store. Also you can support me on Patreon and through YouTube channel membership, just click on that join button below. Alright, that's all for now.